how do I manage beyond liquidity adequacy for 30 days? Let's use this expression pillar two liquidity as a catch-all to cover that. Here is a slide I saw from a KPMG document from last year, and we see what pillar two in, in essence is addressing. It's addressing all those risk types, risk exposure types for liquidity risk that are not addressed by LCR. That's how I would summarize it. That's not what's written on this slide, but that's how I would interpret pillar two liquidity. And that would include, it, it's a bit more than just this, but that would include intraday liquidity, cash flow mismatch risk beyond 30 days, franchise viability, that's for banks that issue uh, wholesale market notes, capital market notes, um, collateral on the top right hand corner, other political liquidity is initial margin, that's collateral funding requirement, intra-group liquidity. What's missing from that slide actually, which is a very key pillar two liquidity exposure is concentration risk. Concentration by individual customer, concentration by customer type, concentration by product type. A bank that raises a lot of its money through internet deposits and is a new bank, has a specific vulnerability that an established bank that has a branch network may not consider as so risky for it, even though it has that same product. So concentration risk is one key pillar two risk exposure that is missing from that slide. For you in your jurisdiction, wherever that may be, think of pillar two liquidity as anything that is not covered by pillar one, i.e. liquidity coverage ratio. And that's the items we've just discussed in the previous slide, plus concentration risk. And pillar two liquidity, as required by most jurisdictions, many jurisdictions around the world today, implies this should be 90 days. Basel three explicitly demands that this is 30 days under its liquidity risk ratio metric. Uh, the pillar two implication is 90 days. So a bit more detail on that. Franchise viability, for example, uh, you may have issued wholesale notes, but you may be required to buy them back for reputational reasons you might. Uh, Non-margin derivatives is becoming rarer and rarer because more and more derivatives are cleared centrally, uh, but there are certain large customer types, for example, one or two central banks that don't <laughs> that don't pass collateral, even if they're negative mark to market. So that might be relevant if you are a market maker in derivatives to customers corporate or central banks or others that don't uh, collateralize their derivatives. Uh, matched books, uh, so for example, market making book in repo that isn't matched, intraday liquidity, we're going to talk about that in a second in a bit more detail. Pillar 2 liquidity does also address an IT aspect, systems and controls. I don't know about you in your jurisdiction personally, but in the UK I have known banks to be given a higher liquidity buffer requirement because they couldn't demonstrate sufficient IT analytics robustness, in other words, adequate systems and controls to manage liquidity risk. Derivative outflows, uh, hopefully that should be covered in the first 30 days of a stress anyway, but of course, where it's not covered in that by LCR, then you need to address that as well. Uh, margin requirements for the repo, uh, intragroup, okay, that's intragroup funding. Funding risk, cliff, cliff risk, of course, you could be 100% above 100% in LCR in day 30, but in day 31, of course, does it dip below that? Cash flow mismatch, is there a dip within the 30 day period? Liquid asset management risk, of course, your liquid asset buffer could be, is commonly composed of assets that aren't cash. And so uh, can all of them be monetized, turned to cash quickly, say within 24 hours? Uh, if not, then let's address that. Concentration, I've discussed. Concentration by all types, as, that, as the bullet point there, on slide 82 is saying, concentration risk is a pillar two liquidity issue. And of course, what tools must, how do we mitigate that? In essence, to be honest, in essence, the, the mitigation for pillar two liquidity is simply a greater size of HQLA, a greater size of liquid asset buffer. That's the primary mitigation that the regulator will impose if it's deemed to be inadequately covered, inadequately mitigated.